to the Victorious Living Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Nakia Young, and I am so excited about the guest that we have today in our virtual studio, and that is none other than Kareem Rogers. Welcome to the show, Kareem. How you doing, Nakia? Thank you for I'm having blessed. me. Oh, no problem. Thank you for coming on. You guys, Kareem is an HR um, recruiter. He's a career coach. He's a really great speaker. That's how we met during Toastmasters. Shout out to Wayo, Wayo Toastmasters <laughs> Club. But yeah, we're going to talk about, we're talking about Commander 24 this season. And this episode is going to be titled Taking Command of Your Career. Okay. Taking Command of Your Career. So let's get into it. All right. So tell the people a little bit more about yourself, like how long you've been into HR and career coaching, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Anything else you want to share? Yeah, for sure. So you asked, how did I get into HR or recruiting? So <laughs> I started recruiting in uh, 2021. I actually started during a pandemic. So funny story, uh, I actually graduated from grad school at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in HR, right? <laughs> and by the time I graduated, this thing called COVID happened. <laughs> so I did not. Perfect have, time. <laughs> I know, right? Perfect, amazing time, right? Uh, but I did not have a graduation. So during that time, uh, I was looking for a job and I actually ended up finding out that recruiting was something that I liked because I was helping somebody on the side recruit uh, some people for their business. And I said, man, this is something that I can really, you know, do long term. So uh, I worked for a credit union in 2021. Uh, I did that for two years and I really just fell in love with uh, the role of recruiting. So that's how I started in recruiting today. And now I try to give advice to job seekers from a recruiting and career coach perspective. Okay. Sounds good. Good, 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 good. All right. So let's get into what are some things that are common mistakes that people make on job applications? Because a lot of people are pivoting, finding new jobs, launching new career paths. A lot of people are in the job search game right now. So what would you say are hmm, five common mistakes? Mm -hmm. Five common mistakes. So I say this one is the most important one. And I think that a lot of people really don't think about this because let's let's really think about everyday life. So Nikki, let me ask you this. You, You like music, right? Yes. Who is your favorite musician? Uh, Prince. Prince. Okay. I love Prince too, by the way. Yeah. Why Prince though? Because he can do it all. He can play every instrument that there is and sing. And that is just amazing. You don't find that a lot. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're on the same wavelength there. But one thing that I want you to notice is when I asked you about that, you gave me some specific details about why Prince stands out to you, right? Mm-hmm. So there's something that makes him stand out compared to other musicians, because let's be honest, there are a lot of musicians that exist in the world. Okay. But for some reason, Prince stands out to you. Yes. So there's something unique or there's something valuable about him that makes him different compared to other people. When it comes to the job search process, a lot of job seekers don't think about what makes them unique. So for me, for example, I'm a recruiter, right? Mm-hmm. Right now, there are a lot of recruiters that are looking for openings right now. Mm-hmm. So for me, my goal is to figure out how can I show that I am unique or I am different compared to other recruiters because every recruiter does the same roles and responsibilities. But there is something about each recruiter that makes them different compared to other people. So for one, they don't think about that idea of what makes them unique. I've seen many resumes where they give me the same information information like I've done this I've done that but okay but what makes you stand out what accomplishments or what what efficiency or, or what cost cutting things have you done that's yeah. one number two networking they don't network mm. so from my experience I've had many job seekers and I ask them when you apply for a job do you only just apply and that's it yes that's all I do yeah it's not what you are supposed to do and let me explain why at the end of the day, like I said, you want to do more than what a regular job seeker does. If you don't take the time to make the necessary connections, people who are in the industry or the positions that you're in, and sometimes not just them, let me make sure I emphasize that, not just them, but maybe the people 
who make the decision in hiring people within those roles, okay. then you are not maximizing the opportunity or you're not maximizing the potential to land the role that you want to have. So networking, I tell people all the time, networking is a skill that is very valuable in every field that you do. And if you don't know how to adequately network, then you're really limiting the opportunities that may be available to you. So that's number two. Okay. Number three, not having a LinkedIn page. Oof, talk about it. Yes, so. Is um, having a LinkedIn page really important? Yes, ma'am. I mean, <laughs> so, like I said, I'm a recruiter. Mm -hmm. So that means from Monday to Friday, I am looking for job seekers for openings at my previous company. Do you know which uh, platform I use the most? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay. You know that study show? And I don't know if it changed, but if I remember, <clears> I said that 95%. I'm going to say it again. 95% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find, find job seekers. Because keep this in mind, we don't only just wait for people to apply for the jobs. Hmm. We go look for them ourselves because sometimes you got to find people who may not actively may not actively be job searching. Or like I said, some people are a little bit afraid to take that initiative. So sometimes as the recruiter, you have to take that initiative yourself. So one of the ways that we find people is based on your LinkedIn page. Did you optimize your LinkedIn page? Did you fill out every information on your LinkedIn page? When I look at your LinkedIn page, is your headline, is the keyword optimized telling me who you are, what career you're in, what makes you stand out? Do you have a good about me? Did you fill out your summary section, your skills section? Do you have endorsement? These things, these things matter to us because we want to make sure that when we reach out to you, that you are the job seekers that we think would be a good fit for the opening. So little things like that are very important. I tell people all the time, you never know who is looking at your LinkedIn page. I tell people all the time, your LinkedIn is essentially your sidekick when it comes to the job search. It's part of your, what I call personal brand, right? Yeah. Your personal brand is what people know about you without you in the room. Mm -hmm. So if you want your personal brand to be strong, you want to make sure that it's optimized so that when I see your LinkedIn page, I know who you are exactly so that I can see if I can reach out to you. So that's number three. Number four, and this is, we were actually laughing about this earlier, not being prepared. <laughs> and I think a lot of people really undervalue when I say that, because I know this is something that a lot of people say a lot, but it is very important. It is very essential to be prepared for an interview. I can tell you, as a recruiter, I have interviewed people who were not prepared and it hurts them dramatically. And what do I mean when I say prepared? Did you actually practice the answers to the interview questions? Did you do, did you do a mock interview? Did you actually think about what to wear? I can tell you for a fact as a recruiter, I have had hiring managers tell me that, you know, so-and-so entered, you know, the video interview and they just had on some jogger pants and a tank top. I mean, you'll be surprised. No, wow. no, let me start okay? <laughs> we already had some stories earlier. But like I said, the little things matter. And the thing is, when it comes to preparation, it's very important. And actually, this is the biggest one. And this is actually something that hurts my heart. Not knowing what the possible salary range is. Ooh, that's the first thing I check before I go in the interview. Because I do not want to lowball myself. Yeah, you'll be surprised. And like I said, I'm a recruiter. So I'm not going to say nothing. But... I tell people behind the scenes, before we make an offer to you, we are literally strategizing what we want to offer you. And there's a lot of factors that come into place, like what you told us, maybe what the team range is, what the hiring manager is willing to offer, if there is a hiring manager, because I know sometimes with some in-house recruiters, and let me make sure I uh, also emphasize, I was an in-house recruiter. So I was working with a specific company and helping them find a chemist for that specific company. I was not a staffing recruiter. So staffing recruiters are the people who help different companies find candidates and things like that. So just to make sure I emphasize <laughs> that. But like I said, I have been in situations where people either accept the first offer without realizing they could have got more money 
Yeah. Or they lowball themselves. Cause I cause I'll ask, what is your expected pay? Yeah. I don't know, maybe this. And also, just word of advice, never give a specific number. I do not advocate for that. I do not recommend that. Okay. Give a range because when you give a range, it gives you the opportunity when they make an offer to maybe negotiate. And sometimes it's not just not just a uh, salary. Negotiate benefits. Mm-hmm. Negotiate PTO. Negotiate other things if possible. But give yourself the option to have left. And if you can, if you have another job that made an offer to you, use that to your advantage. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's negotiation. So when it comes to negotiation, you want to put yourself in a position where you really have the opportunity to get as much as possible. Good. So that's why I say preparation is very key because, like I said, on the job side, or I'm sorry, on the employer side, we are getting prepared. I promise you, they're hoping that you accept a lowball offer. And let me just make sure I emphasize, that's not always the case. Some hiring managers are like, look, that's what they want. We'll get them this. Or they'll say, like, listen, you know what? We really want them. We'll offer them more than what they originally told us. And we'll make sure I also bring it up as well. But I'm just saying, it's a negotiation. So if you are not being prepared for it, you are missing out on so many opportunities on that end. And last but not least, honestly, in my opinion, not really, excuse me, not really making sure that that resume is on point. Mm, okay. So I tell people this all the time, and I think they get surprised when I say this as a recruiter. I am only looking at your resume for between, I think the research says six or seven, but six or seven to nine seconds. Oh, well, he's yeah. giving us the tea, y'all. <laughs> so let me explain why because i know some people are like are you kidding me i do all this work on my resume i put all this information down you only look at it for seven to nine seconds well look at it from my perspective as a recruiter i am responsible for more than one opening okay actually if i remember i think the most i've dealt with at one time was at least 20 or a little bit more or close to that so yeah. that's what I'm saying. Recruiters, we are responsible for more than one opening. Yeah. How many people you think are applying for these openings at one time? A lot. Probably well over 100 <laughs> today. I feel like the record for one of my openings I've done was at least 200 or more. Whoa. Exactly. That's a lot. Exactly. So I have to look at all these applications and I don't have time to thoroughly read every application because keep in mind, I have to try. I have to try to fill a position as quick as possible, mind you, with the right candidate. But I have to try to find an ideal candidate as quick as possible. So, in order to find out who I, who I want to interview, I'm going to scan your resume to see if you have certain keywords on your resume. One thing my uh, my previous supervisor said she would do is she said she would fold the resume in half and see if certain keywords are on your resume. Oh. And I've seen some very um, I guess a nice way to say it's interesting resume sometimes. <laughs> okay. Where I have to elaborate on that. <sighs> What's the craziest thing you've seen on a resume? So I, somebody didn't. I've seen a resume where it wasn't even a resume. It was a <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even say it on the interview to be continued on that one. But uh it was <laughs> It, it was it was something else when we were just like, hey, I don't think you meant to send us this, but okay. But I've had people send me a picture of them as a resume, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I don't know if you're trying to. I don't know if you thought this was a bottle opening or what. You know, power to you, brother. But um, I've seen some resumes where it's not even finished. I've seen people just put, just put their job titles, and I'm like. Okay, what was your what were your roles and responsibilities? What did you accomplish? And it kind of goes back to that first thing I said with value. What makes you stand out? And so that's why I tell people all the time: if you don't know how to make a resume, go to people who can help you make a resume. Like for me, I'm a career coach and resume writer. If not me, go to a mentor, go to a peer, go to some of these employment centers where they will help you actually create a resume. But don't just send any type of resume. Yeah, that's like, good. That's let good. me know that you are serious about this. Because, like I said, I'm trying to find the right candidate. I can't just bring in anyone because I know sometimes, and this, I'm about to rant, sometimes people say, why don't you just give just people a chance? Let me just kind of explain this. While in the ideal world, I want to give everyone a chance, if I or the hiring manager has to find an ideal candidate for, 
a certain role and maybe the hiring manager is being pressured by someone above them mm-hmm. and they bring in someone who is not qualified for that role and they have to train them and get them adequately prepared, who do you think is going to take the fall for that or going to take the hit for that? You. Right. And not just me, the hiring manager. And how do you think it's going to affect them? Their job may be put on the line because of that. So yeah. that's why I tell people all the time why ideally we want to give everyone a chance. That is not always the case. It's not personal, but kind of kind of look at it from our point of view. There are certain situations where that's not possible. So the thing is, you got to make sure, especially if you're qualified, have a resume that showcases those qualifications. Don't just assume like, oh, as soon as I talk to them, I explain. No, everything matters. The interview, the uh, resume, the negotiation, the rapport you build with someone while you're talking to them. All those things matter. Your appearance, things like that. Do not downplay every small detail when it comes to the job search process. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is good stuff, you guys. Um, We were laughing a lot before we started recording this interview because Kareem has some very funny stories. Um, Apparently, working in his line of work could just make him eligible for being a comedian. So... (laughs) What just tell us like pick three stories that are appropriate for a Christian podcast? I guess I don't know. <laughs> what are the craziest things? What are three of the craziest things that people have done in job interviews? That's appropriate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I, I'll get simple ones. I mean, I've I've had. It's, I don't even know. It's funny. It's just so. This is like really. Oh, but I had, I've had, I've heard, I've heard people do interviews while they were in bed, like they were still asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why? I, I don't know. Listen, listen. They were just like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They thought it was a, it was a, you know, talking to somebody, hey, how you doing? Like, brother, get, get, really? Get up. <laughs> Like get what is wrong with you? Like I don't I don't understand. Like this is common sense information right now. So why would you do that? Uh, I've had one, and this actually this one kind of hurt me a little bit more because this person was uh, referred by my mentor. Uh, uh-huh. My mentor, somebody who was he really helped me when I was in college. So he referred someone to me for the job, and like I said, I'm, I'm very understanding if it's a last minute thing. Like. Like I said, if it's a last minute thing or something last minute happens, I'm very flexible with stuff like that. Yeah. A little bit different if I schedule an interview in advance and mm-hmm. you give me a, I feel like it's not really a good reason why you're not prepared or you're not taking this serious. I remember scheduling an interview with someone and when I called him, he was jogging. He's like, oh, I'm running right now. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm just like I said, well, run on, brother, and hung up. <laughs> I still interviewed him, but no, you run on I, and see what the end is gonna be. <laughs> I'll tell you this after that interview, I called my mentor and I told him what happened. He was like, I am so sorry. He was like, he said, I, you know what you gotta do. But he said, Thank you for letting me know about that. And that's another thing, too. Hold on, let's make sure I should have said that too. If someone refers you, we were just talking about this. If someone refers you. Please take it serious. Yes. I have seen many referrals who, once you talk to them, you really question if they even know what the job was. <laughs> also, know what the job is. I've had those two. I've had those two. I've had interviews where people are like, can you tell me what job this is? And, and I get it. Let me first let me first like let me let me first play like a yep. reason. All right. For some people, they apply for a lot of jobs. So I get it sometimes they lose, they lose, you know, focus or they just yeah. forget. I get that, but I will also say that as a bad look. Okay. Especially depending on who's interviewing you, because that makes somebody question, are you serious about this? Because yeah. if the first thing you ask me is, can you tell me what job this is? I'm just going to be like, I-, I have a whole job description right here. Or what's the salary range? The salary range is the first thing you see on the job, on the job description. Yeah. Hmm. Why are you asking that? And there's a reason why people do that. I get why, but it's, it's literally the first thing you see in the job description, what the salary range is. So now I'm going to ask, did you, I'm not going to ask for a beta, but I'm going to question, like, did you even look at the job opening yourself? So that was a two. You said a third one that is appropriate. That's the biggest thing. You said appropriate. Okay. Okay. 
right. Well, I guess it could be a little inappropriate as long as it doesn't involve cussing or something. No. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm mad that it's this hard for you to find an appropriate story. I was gonna say I got stories. You said appropriate. It's that word you said. I mean, I could. Do you want me to tell you about the one? The <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Y'all have to. Oh, I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. I have a. I have an excellent one. I have an excellent one. Okay. I got one where this one guy. So you know when people when they say think of a better term for like instead of saying I'm a janitor, I'm a custodian worker or something like that. Yeah. I don't forget one time I interviewed this guy. And he said, I was like, tell me about yourself. He said, Oh, I'm a uh I'm a narcotic officer. I'm a narcotics officer. I'm thinking, oh, okay, that must mean you work for the police, right? You work for the right. force. Yeah, law enforcement. And no, that's not that's not what you do. I said, oh, okay. I said, see, you work for police? He said, no, I'm a drug dealer. I said, <laughs> it was It was one of those things where I had to kind of stop for a second. I ain't, you know, I had to ask him again. I said, what you say? He said, I'm a drug dealer. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, that's interesting. You know. He was a street pharmacist. Yeah. Street pharmacist. Yeah. That would have been better. That probably would have been better. Because <laughs> I was thinking if you said narcotics officer, that's the same thing I would have thought. Like, right. Like, like, I'm thinking, like, like, something, you right. know. I'm thinking like, okay, you work for the police. That's something big. He said, nah, I'm a drug I ain't a whole drug dealer. I said, okay. And you and you thought that you should tell me that. Okay. <laughs> I said, I, I highly doubt the background check would have found that, but you wanted to tell me that. So I'm like, okay. So... I gotta say I got more stories than that, and we talked about that before we started that we can't talk about. But yeah, recruiting is fun, <laughs> y'all. We're laughing because you know it's making light humor us, but y'all, please don't be out here wilding like this in job interviews. Please, Come on now, please do not go on job interviews while you're still in the bed. Please do not answer a job interview call while you're on the toilet. Oh, you want you want you want to bring that up? You want to bring that up? Yes, please. Right. I, you can't I, leave I, out that story. That my I thought it wasn't appropriate. I thought it wasn't appropriate. So, and this happened, I think, before I started at my previous job. They told me, I forgot. Either either I saw, I forgot how it happened, but I'll never forget where someone's being interviewed. I'm sorry, actually, she, she nasty for this. I'm sorry. So <laughs> she, so you know. I'm sorry, no, that's nasty. I'm, look, oh, yes, it's a gentleman. Okay, uh, let me tell the story. So she's doing the interview, and the first question was, "Why do you think you'll be a good fit?" This woman was on the toilet while she's doing the interview, and so all you heard on the camera was, "I think I'll be a good fit because <laughs> oh, oh." <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what, what I want you to do, if you have another recruiter, just ask them some stories. Just ask them, like, what are some things they dealt with as a recruiter? We deal with a lot that people do not understand. And this is what makes our job hilarious sometimes. Because when I tell you we talk about the things we deal with as recruiters, I, I even told my team last time, I said, we should have, like, a Hall of Fame of, like, some of the crazy, crazy stories. Yeah, because, I mean, it's fun. I mean, look. We already it sounds like a television show. Dick Wolf needs to pick up this concept and make a whole television show about the stuff recruiters go through because this is hilarious. So it's going to be Law or the HR edition? <laughs> yes. <laughs> these are their phone <laughs> uh, These are their phone calls. <laughs> Man. Oh, my God. This don't, is hilarious. Don't, don't tell him about that because you know he's going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to get cast. I'm not going to get traumatized by my past experience. <laughs> With some of these people, okay. I love it. I love it. Okay, I have to stop laughing and ask serious interview questions now. Oh yes, my god. Okay, um, okay, let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about people who have gaps in their work history. What's the best way to explain that on a resume? You know, how does that work? So, for example, I am a slay at home mama. So wow. I've been slay at home mama bear. Hey. So if I want to foray back into the job world. The last time I I held a formal job somewhere, I think I was 
Well, I quit school teaching in 2014, and then I did receptionist for my church for a little bit. And I stopped that in 2017 and just focused on raising my kids. So now we're in 2024. So that's a pretty huge gap. Um, do I explain that on the resume or do I just, you know, how do we work that mm -hmm. from in those situations? Let me, let me kind of preface by saying this too. Sometimes when it comes to the appointment gaps, uh, in terms of the response you would get from it, how they will, how they will uh, receive that information, it really depends on the hiring manager. I can okay. tell you recruiter sometimes and keeps in mind every hiring manager is human so sometimes they have their own biases we are all biased people so mm -hmm. make sure we say that uh so for some of them when they see employment gaps and this is where us as recruiters we come in we kind of while we advocate for the hiring manager we also advocate for the job seeker sometimes because i've had had conversations with some hiring managers where i'm like hey no you should give them a chance like okay they got a three-month employment gap that doesn't mean nothing right but from a job seeker perspective, what I recommend is, uh, for one, if you can, uh, and this is where the summary section comes in. You can kind of explain it in your summary section or your cover letter, which okay. is where a cover letter is valuable. Uh, another thing you can do actually is do a different type of resume format. So the format that we're all used to is called a chronological format. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many different formats that you can utilize. And uh, one book that I think that talks about it is actually two. One was made by my mentor, uh, Nicolette. Uh, if I find it, I'll let, I'll let you know later. Uh, okay. But one I was called also called modernize your resume, where they give you they show you many different resumes and show you how a lot of great resume writers in the industry, some who I know, uh, create some great resumes for their clients. But you can really format it where it's not very noticeable that you had an employment gap. But also too, it's another thing too is I think this is where the network comes in. If you know someone, or if you can get a referral for someone, use that to your advantage. Because okay. all the time, the connections are always very important. And I can tell you from experience, I have seen some people get some interviews just through connections. And when you see their resume, you're like, uh, yeah, you wouldn't have got this opportunity if you didn't have this connection. Like yeah. I said, not a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying connections are very important. Who you connect with will always work to your advantage. So those are some strategies that I kind of would recommend. There's, of course, some more. But those are the ones I can really think of right now. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay. I have a question that I have been wanting to know forever. And I'm sure you probably get asked this a lot. I'm scared. What? No. <laughs> why do jobs, when you go to apply for a job, why do they ask you to upload your resume and then one or two pages later ask you to enter your job history one by one like you didn't just upload your resume why y'all be doing it like please explain what what okay. was okay okay i know i know i'm a recruiter i can't explain i cannot explain. <laughs> i cannot listen and I, I, I can't i'm i complain about that as a recruiter sometimes myself okay I, I don't know, and I wonder if it's because of the ATS system themselves. And for those of you who don't know, the ATS system is an applicant tracking system. So that's a system that you use uh, basically when you apply for a job. And it helps us out because it kind of helps filter out the resumes based on certain things. So okay. I don't know if the ATS system doesn't do that. I cannot, admittedly, I cannot give you a valid reason why they do that. Okay. I can tell you, all I can tell you is I am in full agreement with you when I say <laughs> I don't know why they do that. They need to fix that. Look, we got AI. How, how we got AI? But well, we can't fix the we can't fix the thing the thing on the ATS system. So yeah, that's, crazy. that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that is my pet peeve. I just I'm like, oh God, I'm not gonna sit here and enter. I just showed you. Mm -hmm. Now either you can read or you can't. I'm not about to re-enter. That's like I'm redoing my resume twice. Like, no. Nah. Somebody should make an Instagram reel or TikTok about that. That'd be funny. Yes, it would. <laughs> Probably, I gotta see if Corporate Aaron has done it. Have you heard of Corporate Aaron? Oh. oh my God, you have to go on TikTok and you have to look up this girl named Corporate Aaron. She does all of these comedy sketches based off of funny things that happen in corporate. She has me in tears. <laughs> Literal tears were like you're laughing and no sound will come out of your mouth and you just look like a crazy seal. Like, like 
she yeah if i'm having a terrible day i go look at corporate erin on corporate erin on tiktok so i'm gonna see if she's done something about that but you ever had those moments where you're watching those funny videos at work and you try to you gotta like hide your laughter because you post a you're supposed to be working right now but you look on tiktok watching these funny (laughs) these funny job humors yes don't watch corporate erin at work because you will be yeah don't no watch and don't don't be trying to sneak and look at corporate Erin while you in church. Don't watch. Don't look at her when if you're in the library. Don't yeah. If you're yeah. anywhere where you're supposed to have decorum and be quiet, don't look at it then. Nikki, I just told you what recruiters got to deal with. We need some humor with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you can start a whole TikTok channel just like. I don't know. You give yourself a name like Timmy the Recruiter or something, and like, just, just, yeah, because this is hilarious. Okay. Story. Real quick, I actually oh, did. Make, I actually did make some TikTok with some humorous, with some humorous recruiters, HR recruiter stuff. So it's funny you say that. Oh, okay. I'm gonna find you when we get off of here because I That's love right. to laugh. I mean, we're on the brink of an apocalypse now. So anything that I can find to make myself laugh to get away from the depressing news cycle, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Laugh to keep laugh to keep from crying, right? Listen. Okay, let me talk about your company. So he's got this company, you guys. Uh, HR Depot. Did I say that right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, HR Depot LLC. Tell us about that. So HR Depot LLC, we are a career coaching and resume writing company. And our goal is to help our clients find a job that they love within 90 days. So as I was complaining about some of the mistakes job seekers make, some of them really need some help. And And don't get me wrong. Some really just don't know how to make their resume stand out. Okay. A career coach and a recruiter. I work, I work on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. So with both perspectives, I can give you some tips and I can really help you optimize your chances at landing a job you love. And that's what HR Depot LLC does. We are here to be your biggest advocate and your biggest sidekick during the job search process because we'll make sure that you present yourself the best way you can to find the job that you want. Because one thing that I've realized is a lot of people who are looking for jobs are actually qualified for the roles that they want most of the time. Okay. They just know how to sell themselves. And sales is a big word for me. Sales is a skill that everyone should really learn because if you don't know how to sell yourself, you don't know how to showcase value. And so I'm that person that's trying to really help sell you as a job seeker to a company to show that, hey, I am the best fit for this role. You should you should make this offer to me. So that's what HR Depot does. We do that through resume writing, interview prep. LinkedIn optimization. We're planning to add a career coaching service as well. Okay. We are really planning to help job seekers overall. Awesome. 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 So you guys can find what's oh, the website is thehrdepot.com. Mm. Okay. So make sure you check him out on there. And yeah. what else do you have coming up? Tell people like what you got going on. Where can they find you? How can- Connect with you. So you can find me on Instagram at Kareem underscore Rogers three. Uh, I highly recommend adding me on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is Kareem Rogers. I am always posting content. Uh, currently right now, I am taking a week or two break because you always need to just rejuvenate your mind. And also I'm going to Jamaica tomorrow. So want to have okay. a vacation. I know, right? <laughs> but I am always posting content on there. Uh, provide some insight for some job seekers. Actually, next month in February, uh, me and one of my colleagues, Charity McDonald, we've actually done two uh, LinkedIn audio sessions together already where we do an Ask a Recruiter session where, like I said, I provide some insight and I have people ask me questions that they may have like you did. And I just give them my two cents, me and Charity. And sometimes some other people with some expertise join as well. We welcome all perspectives because we're trying to help each other out. But we are planning another session in February. So okay. stay tuned for that. And like I said, add me on LinkedIn for that as well. But that's just some of the things that I kind of have going on right now with the HR resume writing recruiting business right now. Awesome. Awesome. You guys follow him. I follow him. I have learned a lot from Kareem and I've gotten some tips to spruce up my LinkedIn page too. I still have a ways to go, but 
it's a lot better than it was. And some of Kareem's tips helped me a lot. So make sure that you follow him and that you take his advice. Don't just listen to it and go, oh, okay. And then don't do nothing with it. Make sure that you activate the information that you get and you will see some great results. So I can vouch for him on that. I'm so touched. Thank you. So <laughs> You're welcome. You know, I'm an old auntie, y'all. I'm almost <laughs> 43 years old. I mean, I keep finding myself sounding like the get off your lawn man. Like, I know this technology. I just, I, don't know. <laughs> I used to always laugh at me. Yes, I used to laugh at baby boomers when they show me how to work this. I don't know how to. And now I feel like one of those people. Like, by the time I feel, figure out one thing, Five other things have come out, and I'm just like, I need to get one of these young people to help me with this. The kid, when well, something funny, I know we still do it. I, I asked my niece today, because she's in high school, right? I was like, why aren't you in school? She said, oh, I'm on winter break. I was like, y'all need more class. I said, oh, my God. Where did that voice come from? I know, right? I said, my parents. <laughs> oh, my God. I am turning into one of them, man. I said, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. We got to fight. We got to fight to, to hold on to our youth. Look, I got to be, look, I got to be victorious right now. Play. There you go. There you go. We're going to have victory over this technology. If it's, look, if you one of those people that LinkedIn has you baffled and you're just like, look, I'm not, I already, I just learned Facebook. And as soon as I learned that they changed it around and turned it into meta and did all this stuff, I'm not about to learn LinkedIn too. Listen, I feel you. I know learning all this and relearning it is annoying, but people are sleeping on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is becoming that go-to and you do not want to be caught slipping and having a selfie or even worse, no picture at all. Like I've seen people with just, you go to their page and there's just not even a picture. Like I got stories for that too. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Before I was gonna let you go, but I just thought about that. Tell us five things, five mistakes people are making with their LinkedIn pages. I know you could probably rattle off thirty-five, but let's just do it five. Okay. One, Rest one not professional. <laughs> Two, nothing like you said. They don't have a profile picture at all. Why does that happen? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> uh, three, they they post it wrong. So if you are posting a picture of you at a bar, at a game, yes, it, I told you I got stories. Uh, if you are posting pictures of that, please do not do that. Please take a professional headshot. Like I say, even if it's just with a dress shirt or a suit, mm -hmm. wear that, have a big, wonderful smile. I know everybody has a great smile about them. Please just use that with a clear background. That's one. Take one of you by yourself, <laughs> one person, and please keep that in mind because we want to make sure that we're talking to the right person or know who we're talking to. And the last one I would say, what was one I'm thinking about? Well, it's not, it's not really a mistake. This is something to keep in mind is just appearance. Like I said, appearance always matters. So professionalism to me is very important. So I always try to look as professional as possible and think about just what you wear. Do yeah. you, like I said, and this is actually a debate. So it's not even like a, what I think some people feel like you should not wear piercings in your profile pictures or dye your hair. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm more of a, hey, if that's what you feel like represents yourself best, do you, right? But there are some people who are not for that. So I just want to make sure I give both sides and let you know yeah. Choose which route you want to choose because depending on who the hiring manager is or who the recruiter is, little things like that matter. Not saying that I'm that type of person, but just because I'm like that doesn't mean that there aren't other people like that. And I've had conversations with some people who say like, no, I would not talk to that person because of this. So keep yeah. that in mind. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much. This has been really good. I've learned a lot. I've laughed a lot. Thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you and thank you for sharing your expertise with the Victorious Living Solutions audience. Thank you very much, Nikki. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and to everyone else. You have a great rest of your day. And one more thing, January and February is where a lot of job openings are available. So <laughs> really utilize this time to really find a job if you are a job seeker looking for a job. All right. It's y'all time to, sh to shine, you guys. So go out there and look and follow these tips. Look on Kareem's LinkedIn page for some more tips and 
Let's take command. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning in and keep living victoriously. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Hey, Victors. Coach Nakia here. So let's see. You've set your goals for the new year. Check. You've created a vision board. Check. So that's it. You're all set to have a happy new year, right? And achieve all of your goals this year. That's got to be enough, right? Mm, not so much. Did you know that 92% of people set goals and say, I'm going to do this and so by the end of the year and don't achieve them? Did you also know that the likelihood of you achieving your goal shoots up by 65% if you have accountability partners? Hmm? And with that in mind, we are pleased to announce the Command Your 24 online course. This course is just what you need to make sure that you crush your goals despite life's challenges and have a victorious 2024. It comes complete with eight weeks of powerful transformative teachings, weekly assignments, and weekly Q&A sessions with yours truly, access to a private online community, and so much more. You will also receive a 20% discount on all future courses, merch, and etc. So don't delay. Register today. We start February 1st, and we are going to have a victorious 2024, and we want you to join us.